All right, so at this point I just stopped at the part where I created the account and I'm going to be getting these suggestions for you oftentimes. Uh, you can ignore them or you can follow them. Uh, for example, it says, why not follow Instagram? Guess what? Instagram has an Instagram account. It's ironic. <laughs> Twitter has a Twitter account as well. Facebook has a Facebook account. Um, and what you'll see there, a possibility for following Instagram is that you could keep up to date with the latest of what's going on Instagram. That's useful. So you can always unfollow. I'll show you how to unfollow later. But if you get the suggestion of Instagram, might as well follow them and we can unfollow later. I'm not sure why this is out of focus. But um, then we can... We can ignore these, view all, so if you want more suggestions, you can view all. I'm going to ignore it for the moment. What I'm looking at right now is my home screen, this little house right there. And again, your screen might look slightly different than mine because I've got the iPhone version. You might have Android. It might look slightly different. They sometimes do not match up with features, sometimes. But I'm on the home screen, and what I'm seeing here are the latest posts from those that I have followed. So this says, Emma Sweets, 15 minutes ago, posted this. So there's that photo. It's got 57 likes, that little heart right there, and then at least one comment. So Jenny Cookies, two hours ago, posted that. That has 173 likes, and it has 57 comments. Notice the first comment, which is optional, is the original person that posted it, or the business. You can add a comment or a caption to your pictures, like that. And in there we can include hashtags and mentions and other stuff that I'll explain what that means later. Further going through, Emma posted this seven hours ago, etc, etc. People really like sweets. 589 likes right there. As you use Instagram and you go back to the very top, if I scroll back to the top and I actually pull it further, see that little circle that appeared at the top? That's refresh. So to get the latest, you want to go back to the home screen and pull it all the way down till the circle appears, and it'll check, is there anything new? In my case, no. There hasn't been anything new, but that's how you refresh it. If nothing has popped up new, you might have to just go to your home screen and just pull it down all the way till that little circle thing appears and then rotates, and then it'll check if there's anything new. The next icon over is a magnifying glass. If you tap on that, let's check that one out. Tap on the magnifying glass. This is a pretty complex screen. They've made it more complex recently, but it could be very valuable. Um, you're going to see a bar. And remember, everyone, if you haven't muted your device, please take a moment to do so. People, someone keeps getting text messages. Um, so you're going to see this constantly scrolling sort of banner on a particular topic that is happening. That one interests me there. Notice you can swipe between them. Pixel art, I love that stuff. So if I click on that, what's going to happen is these are accounts that are posting on Instagram on this particular topic. Pixel art is basically making computer graphics like classic computers that had very limited graphics, not like the modern ones where it looks so realistic. I like these that are like very limited because it, I think it's very creative and nostalgia reasons. So the point of this is I'm seeing all of these accounts and I can click follow. Uh, at a certain point, perhaps as I get famous, as I get popular on Instagram, perhaps I would be featured in these as well. That's a very high bar to reach, however, to be on one of these featured things because you need to post a lot of great content on a regular basis, build an audience, and then perhaps eventually, uh, because this is curated, someone is checking out these accounts, and perhaps you can show up on one of these topics that appears here. Crafty gifts, trending places. Let's see what's going on there. Tap on that. Oh, notice this also here. I got a notification. I'll get back to that in a moment. But the observatory in Orange County has some uh, photos that have been taken recently. We'll see that we can attach a location to a photo. House of Blues Anaheim, I guess there's concerts going on. 
the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium, Pier 36 in New York, or the Waldorf in New York. So these are photos that people are taking of a location that are trending at the moment. Thinking in terms of how this benefits me, I could take photos of landmarks, I could take photos of locations and tag the location as we'll see how, and then I could show up here also along with everyone else to, get, to gain me exposure. Question. Uh, was your, the first one that showed up on your list was the observatory, or what was the first? On the trending places? Mm -hmm. um, it was the observatory, yes, but it may be different on yours. Is yeah. it different? Is that, even if we have, don't really have favorites yet, is it because you have favorites already? That we're no. Or? Th this is probably not tied to favorites. This is literally trending throughout Twitter. This is not based on what I've been doing or what I favorited and such. This should be what's happening throughout Twitter. I'm just wondering why you get a different list than I would get this one. What's the first one you get? Um, I get a Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. Well, I get it too, but it's just out of order. Okay. See, there's my Bill Graham right there. So maybe it just organizes it differently just to so that everyone is not following the exact same thing over and over. It might, it might randomize it to get a better distribution of connections. Okay. Sorry, say that again? Well, that's fine. I see one from San Francisco, one from New York. It's just going to be random stuff that is trending throughout Instagram that might be interesting. I'm going to back up. Yes? So when I first opened up the account, I have uh, the blue bar at the top. It says, follow more people, and then there's a white check mark. But then it, if I scroll up, it's giving me um, Beyonce, Hidden Popular Entertainment, but it's just amazing. How do I get to where, I don't know how you did your left and right swipe at the top to change that. Do you have icons at the bottom here? A home icon or a... I have an Android, so I only have the uh, back arrow settings for my, yes. for my phone. Okay, so uh, on search, again, there's a lot to look at here because then we've got um, also videos. So press play to explore videos. Let me take a quick look at that. So Instagram is showing someone showing off making coffee. I can scroll up. Selena Gomez, let's skip that one for the moment. Then there's that, that's cool. So there's some videos that people are posting. Okay, I'm going to go back here. Trending tags. Again, we can add hashtags to our photos. Hashtags are keywords that help our pictures get found. Uh, you see hashtags all over the place on Twitter. They're most popular there. But you also see hashtags on Facebook and uh, Google+. They're a little less popular there. And also Pinterest. They're pretty popular on Pinterest and very popular on Instagram. It's a keyword. Up to 30 that you can attach to your pictures. At a certain point though, adding too many hashtags appears spammy. You're trying to please too many people. You're trying to reach too much of an audience by putting lots of hashtags. So even though you have up to 30, it's a little bit better to be more judicious. 3, 5, 10 maybe? But up to 30, you might be using a shotgun approach trying to hit too many you don't and you don't quite land so here hashtag cheers hashtag graduation hashtag fog so if I'm looking at a particular hashtag I can tap that these are all of the hashtags that are happening with these are all the pictures that are happening here's the top posts like this one here why is it top well it tells me that it's got 15,000 likes. That's why that photo is on the top. 
And then after that is most recent. Let's see, this person, better wonder, at the moment has three likes. Perhaps that'll climb up to a thousand likes as well. But this is a reason why to explore the hashtags because maybe I'm going to post something with a hashtag that resonates with people so that they can do the interactions which we'll get to again the like the comment the re uh, the, the share or the follow go back trending tags I can do see all and then this will give me a list again this I like this view because it tells me a hashtag and it tells me how many are using that hashtag this one's got 6,000 that are using it at the moment X-Men Apocalypse 7,000 Rainbow 8,000 Cheers, etc. International Mountain Day, 4,000. The Force Awakens, 11,000. Barbershop, who would have thought? So if I have a business that is a barbershop, that hashtag is trending. I would be foolish not to take advantage of that hashtag. Explore Posts, then, is going to give you random posts, usually the ones that are popular like this someone showing off right here making this kind of cake uh, and that's got 561 likes so how do you get how do you get on this screen this one seems to say based on people you follow so this might be different than yours and then the original concept of search screen was literally search at the top up here. You got a search box that now is kind of almost taken second place, but on every social network, it's very valuable to use search. Let's try it here on Instagram. So I'm in the search screen, and then I'm going to click the search box at the top. It's not just a title, it's a box where you can click to search. Because here then you can search and find results that are the top results. You can search for people on Instagram, you can search for hashtags on Instagram, you can search for places. So that's how you can connect with people that are local. So if you have a local business that you really want to reach out in San Diego, I can go to search, I can go to places, and I can say near my current location. If I tap that on, it might ask you first, would you like to, would you like to share your location? If it doesn't go directly like mine, I've already accepted it before. They might ask you, would you like to share a location? You can do yes. And what will happen there is it'll search for places that are nearby and what hashtags, I mean, what photos are used. Disneyland is relatively nearby. But let's go to the happier place on Earth, San Diego Comic Con. I'm going to tap that. And so this has got these are the top posts, recent posts. Let's see that, how recent was that. 20 hours ago. Throwback Thursday. Oh, that's when the people went to that impromptu free concert of Star Wars music last year at Comic-Con. Uh, people had visited a panel and then J.J. Uh, Abrams popped out and said, hey everyone, would you like a free Star Wars concert? Follow me. And they took him over to the bay and gave him a free Star Wars concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What makes, when you say that I like how do those uh, it's going to be based on a few things. Location, because the Four Point Sheraton is right across the street. 24-hour fitness is a little down the road and such. What's going to show this is related to your location and also related to the amount of content there. So we're not that close to Disneyland, but it is third place here because it's probably got lots of results. So basically content photos so so again all of that SEO getting content on your location you know having a location I believe this is tied to Foursquare so if you've got a location on Foursquare when someone will see when we post a photo we can choose a location and then it will let you attach a location to your photo and thus build more content attached, <coughs> attached to a location you know, I've been on Foursquare for a long time, and as a person, I've sort of lost, unfortunately, interest yeah. to some degree in Foursquare. It used to be really fun as a person, but I think as a business, it's still valuable. 
because it's so tied into many location services. Right, that's what I was, I could care less about Brookwood, mm -hmm. but I noticed last night that the business is kind of Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you're in the process of that. Now, um, you know, Google Maps are the big famous one, but for businesses, they often have to pay a licensing fee. Alternatives are Foursquare and then openmaps.org and a bunch of other mapping services. Nokia's mapping services is pretty good, so that's why um, Foursquare would be valuable to have a location set up because I believe that's what Facebook is using, since Facebook is not a very good friend with Google at the moment. So nearby, that's under search, that could be valuable. I'm just going to put it on top for the moment and uh, it remembers my recent searches, but I'm going to search for, let's see if I find any pictures at all of cats. So here under cats, it's going to show me cats of Instagram account, the hashtag cats, which has 26 million posts. Cats of Instagram hashtag has more. So if you were posting photos of your cat, and you only use the hashtag cats, you're not reaching a big, a big enough audience, Cats of Instagram is a higher amount of posts there. If I look at the hashtag, that's not a cat. But um, I see the posts regarding cats. There is actually. Very recently it was it was activated to be for us to be able to do that and to also have promoted posts where my photo will reach more people if I pay for it, just like Google. What's that there? Okay, sent to. We'll look at that later. Related cat, uh, related tags up here. Instacat. That is not a cat. Okay, so search. It's very valuable. You should be spending time there as a business and brand to keep up to, to, up to date with tr trends, what's new, and inspiration. Question. So is it always lowercase, the hashtag, or do you uppercase, lowercase? Can you put numbers, or do you put symbols, like uh, ampersand or something, or just strictly letters? Or? You can do letters and numbers. You can do capital or lowercase, doesn't matter. Um, and I believe they've even added the ability to search hashtag emojis, if you can believe that. So if I search hashtag cool face, there we go, 549,000 results there. So you can search hashtag emojis nowadays. So. Well, uh, let me finish the, the answer right there. Uh, then, about symbols and such? No, you can't do symbols. Exclamation points and periods and ampersands and such, that doesn't work. Uh, it's going to be letters and numbers and apparently emoji. No spaces. Once you, If I'm searching hashtag, hashtag the space best space cats, that's not going to work because it's going to be hashtag the. Wherever you have a space, it breaks the hashtag. But you can use hashtag. That is a symbol, right? That's the only symbol. The symbol for hashtags is the hash mark, yes. Question, sure. Yeah, um, still having a little issue. You see where you should show the hashtag the hashtag, 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 the I have to go home and not be able to access this. No, you're in the right place because the simple thing I said earlier that what's weird is that it's So it wasn't that it was an extra time screen, they don't make it on the screen, they just have to figure out which box.
hashtag cool face thumbs up. OK, so this is search. You can explore it on your own. It's very valuable. I'm going to go on to the other screens here. I'm going to skip the one in the middle for the moment. That's one of the big ones to know about. That's actually posting something, but we'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to skip over to this next one, this little heart in the bubble. That's notifications. Every social network has some way of getting notified. Hey, you got a like. Hey, you got a follow. Hey, you got whatever, a comment. So when I was talking a moment ago, did you see a little number pop up? I don't know what it is. I don't know if you guys followed me. Thank you. But if not, let's see what it is. I'm going to tap that. So Kakiri, Kakiri Ziki started following me, and Galactus Thanos started following me. Wow. Since, you signed up. Since I signed up, 52 seconds ago. So I can also pull that down to refresh it, actually 17 minutes ago. So yes, I have been followed already. The reason for this is, you know, I haven't posted anything. How can I get followers? Well, um, people can use the search feature. Uh, and they can search and in my biography or in my name I might have these keywords that people have searched for so that's why one of the important things to do about your name and your biography we haven't edited the biography yet but in my biography I can put you know San Diego based web designer and if someone is on hashtag searching web designer San Diego I could pop up so for whatever reason these two accounts followed me so I've got you and following, I'll explain that in a moment. And I got another one right there. Te, te, te Eric 33 Just right now, three seconds ago, it happened. Right before your eyes. Okay, who are these people? Well, I can tap on the name or the icon of any account. Hopefully it's safe for work. And then so here, Galactus Thanos um, is following me uh, from New Delhi. Um, 191 posts, 491 followers, 600 following. So this is a person that is using Instagram to get followers for his posts, which are very self-centered, which is not bad. It's not bad at all. Some of these look really cool, kind of like that one. But he's building a brand or an identity or whatever online, and he has chosen to follow accounts and some are going to follow back. You're not required to follow back, as I said. He might be a very nice person. He might have very nice photos. I might follow. They kind of look cool. Sure, I'll give him a follow. I'll explain that in a moment. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so yes, you could have people following you for weird reasons. Let's see these other people. Again, hopefully these are safe for work. Traveler. I'm proud to be the extraordinary of TM team. Okay, he's got 1,300 followers, 500 following. Like Twitter, there is a ratio that you should take into account when you choose to follow. The ratio is how many followers to following does an account have? An account may be following 2,000 accounts, but they only have 20 followers. So that's an indicator that they're not worth following. If they've only got 20 followers and they're following 2,000, why, why isn't there more reciprocity? Many people will follow back, just if you simply follow them. But more discerning people are going to look at an account, what's their biography about, what are they posting? Oh look, he's doing one of these very creative things that you see sometimes. That's not one picture. That is six pictures posted in consecutive order that when someone views the account, it looks like a fake picture. It's a very creative thing, a little complicated, because you have to post six pictures perfectly cropped for each of the six quadrants of your photo. I've seen some that are nine sized grids. In this whole screen here, all nine of those photos would be related to one big picture. That's very creative. But the odd thing is that if someone simply looks at that photo, what am I looking at? they get a sense of it when they see your whole profile. So he's only got one of those, but another, these are kind of cool things. I might follow. Do they relate with my business? I'm Victor's Bakery. Does it really benefit me to connect? Yes and no. Yes, because I might see interesting things and get, it, get an idea. Now I have an idea to do that with some cupcakes. 
No, I might not follow because they don't relate to what my business is about. But based on that ratio there, he seems like a valuable follow. He's got more followers than he is following. I'll go ahead. I can always unfollow later. I'll show you how in a moment and again also to block. Let's look at this next one. No posts yet. Okay, so Ty created the account right now, or I don't know when, but they created the account. They don't have any posts yet. 15 followers following 219. That ratio is what I'm talking about. 200 to 15. So he's got more than 200 over his base followers. And I'm not saying there's a percentage, like make sure the following is 23%. I'm not saying that there is a value. You're going to decide when you see it. How many following versus followers does he have? Unfortunately, because there's no biography, I don't know what he's about. I don't know what he's posting. There are no posts. This is not, at the moment, an account to follow, in my opinion, because there's nothing of value for me. I could ignore that. Great, I have a follower. Uh, my number increased to followers. When I post something, he may see my post and decide to buy my product. Or ignore, or, or whatever. So I could ignore this account, or if I don't want to follow her, there is a button right there. You're looking at an account. You have to go to their profile, so click their icon. And then in their profile, somewhere you should see, you should see the three dots, this menu. A three dot menu, I tap that and there's a bunch of actions such as block user or if they're really bad, report them. And there's other actions, copy address, share profile, send message. We'll talk about those later, but that's how you can stop a, stop a, a follower. Then they won't see your content. It's up to you to decide if you want to do that, if you want to weed out the followers that don't relate to your business. Uh, I would ignore that eventually accounts that are fake and spammy and such get taken out and they will unfollow you Instagram will take them out there was the great Instagram purge about a year ago where Instagram uh, updated their algorithm and shut down a bunch of accounts that were fake and I remember reading an article what's that? definitely I remember reading an article about someone that had like 10,000 followers and after the purge he had seven because that he had 9,000 accounts that were fake following. And it happened to me too. I lost a few followers because some were fake. That's okay. You want the real followers, and if you want to spend your time going in and blocking fake accounts, fine. I would rather spend it on posting cool content that gets me found by more relevant people. But to block an account, you just go to their profile, go up to the icon of options, the three dots, and then block them. I'm not going to. So this is the notifications. When there's something new, you'll have a little icon. It already went away there, but this is all my current following. If I actually don't want to follow an account anymore, from this screen I can turn off the follow, or if I don't see the screen, I can always go to an account, and you'll see following, and you can unfollow at that point. This acti activity screen is also valuable because there's you and there's following. This is the activity that is happening with you, with your account. If you switch over to following, this will show you who you are following, what they are doing. So, Minimalist Baker, eight minutes ago, you can refresh that also if you pull it. Minimalist Baker liked eight photos. Galactus Thanos started following 13 others. Okay, so I'm not so special. Um, also Kaki Kiriziki, eight others. Mike M. Carey liked those photos. Jenny Cookies liked those photos. Liked those photos. What's the point of that? You're seeing what other people are doing, sure. But this is more for the discovery. If I'm seeing if I followed an account, that means I care about their content. And so then if I look here and I see one of my accounts has followed another account, that could be valuable to me. These eight photos about cookies 
could relate to what my business is about, and now I've been exposed to eating bird food. Well, what's this account about? I'm gonna go there, health coach, personal trainer and blogger, 26,000 followers, following 1,400. Okay, that one's a very discerning account. They have lots of followers, relatively few that they are following. It could be valuable for me to follow them also, because I could see stuff that inspires me, <clears throat> and possibly I could get a follow, a follow back, if my content is good enough. Um, you can always check who are they following. You can always go to an account, click on these, they, do, they don't look clickable, but you can click on, okay, who did this person find worthy enough to follow? 42 burners. The test kitchens of Martha Stewart Living. There are 42 burners. These are their stories. 10,000 followers following. So that's the point of this activity screen, following, for you to discover accounts to follow, to be inspired by. And some accounts will follow you back as soon as you give a follow. Don't be saddened if they don't. Because I know that in my personal and for the businesses that I manage, we don't automatically follow back an account. We vet them. We take a look. What are they about? What's their biography? What have they posted? Is it relevant to my business? We're happy that you, this customer followed us, but what they're posting about all day long is dumb stuff. Why would we want to see that? So we don't have to follow. And then if we look at the, the last icon, this the user icon, the account icon, if you click there, Once we have posts that we've made, these icons here will make sense. I won't talk about those just yet. Up here we've got zero posts. I'm going to refresh that. Three followers, and I'm following seven. If I click on following, this is everyone that I'm following, and I no longer want to follow this account, so unfollow. Easy. Who are my followers? I can look there and see them there. And I've just got this anonymous icon and no biography. People will see me as Victor's Bakery, but nothing else really. Maybe people were searching that keyword, bakery. That's how I got found. But the importance of this screen, as a beginner especially, is to go to Edit Profile. Let's do this. Make sure you're on the, on the user icon, your account down here, the little person, and then Edit Profile. This is where you can change the full name. The full name can have spaces, capitalization, symbols, emoji. The username is the one that can only exist one in the whole world. And I can change it if I want to right there. That one cannot have spaces and capitalization, special characters. So now I've become Victor C12399. And whatever followers I have, I still keep them. Nothing happens to that. I can change my name as many times as I want to anything that I want. But if you give up a name and want to come back to it, someone might have taken it. Yes, these are tied uniquely also to email addresses. So if you create another email address, you can create another Instagram account. Here we've got bio and website. Remember, website doesn't literally have to be your home page. What if I have, what if I also want to show off my Etsy shop? What if I've got stuff there on Etsy? No problem. So I can link any address that I want there. What if I've got my website but then I want to point people directly to the blog that's fine too they will see my biography they will see that link it's an active link they can click on it and it'll go directly to my blog well, what about if at this month I'm promoting one particular product 
So if I have the link to my product, there's directly pointed to that particular product that I'm selling and hyping this month. That link can be anything you want. Bio, uh, you have a limit. I forget what the limit is. I think it's like... I think it's like... Um, 140 characters probably, maybe 160. So, this is fun here. My um, my auto complete. I put in one word, a random word, junkie, and then it suggested to me the next word. So I made up the sentence right now. The computer, the the phone, made up this word, this sentence for me. Junkie to be the first half of the day before I get a follow back. It's just random words that the that the iPad gave me. Great, that'll be my biography. Then your information, your email address, if you need to change that, if you want to add a phone number again for security to retrieve your your account, and then you can do gender, you can specify that or not. And I believe also, I don't see it here, but I believe sometimes it pops up and asks would you like to share your birthday? You know, you're gonna, you'll get a cool little something on your birthday. Um, I'm not seeing it here, but it wouldn't really apply, perhaps, for a business. And here's where I can add my photo. So will it let me take a photo? Yes. There we go. There we go. So I've got a photo now, so that I can be further found. If I've got a logo, I have to work a little bit harder because I have to get my logo from Photoshop onto my phone, onto my tablet. Um, you know, I can email it to myself and such. I think my photo crashed the app. It was the big cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Too much smile. Okay, so if you edit your biography, you want to use it effectively. Um, I haven't quite fully talked about it, but uh, let's say if I go back to edit. I'm editing my biography, I could put hashtags in there too. When we actually post photos, the hashtag will make a little more sense. Can't quite show it here. But I can add, I can go to my keyboard and add the hash mark. And add hashtag cats. That would be an active link. When someone visits my profile, that hashtag would be active, and then they can see all the posts related to that. But why would I be posting a hashtag about something like that? No, I would actually be posting a hashtag related to my products and such. Or maybe, as we will see, I can make up my own hashtag. If I've got Victor's Bakery, I could have a hashtag that I make up, uh, hashtag uh, yum yum cookies. And that's the hashtag that I use for all my posts. Uh, just because you can make a hashtag, though, doesn't mean it'll be a hit. Maybe no one uses it, and you're the only one using your own hashtag. So that's kind of like communities on Google Plus or groups on Facebook. If you don't have anyone to populate it and use the group or the hashtag, is it really being useful to you? The last thing on this screen that we can do is if we go up to the settings, you should see a little gear. This is where it can ask you again about connecting with Facebook or your contacts. 
edit profile is what I was looking at a moment ago. I can change my password. Uh, we haven't liked posts yet, but the ones I've liked will be listed here. Private account. When your account is private, only people you approve can see your photos and videos on Instagram. Your existing followers won't be affected. So for business, this is not too valuable. I don't want to have a private business account. I want to be able to get as many followers as possible. If I set this to private and someone tries to follow me, I have to approve them. And no one's going to be able to see any of my posts until they follow me. So it's sort of like, what's behind door number one? You won't know until you open it. You might not want to open it. Users might not want to request to, to follow you based just on your biography. So for business, that's not too valuable. For personal, most people, I would say, use it for personal because that's how you keep the stalkers away. linked accounts. If I select that, I get all of these networks that I can link to, and the reason I can do that is that I'm going to post to Instagram, but I've also got a Facebook to manage, and I've also got a Twitter to manage, and I've also got Flickr or Swarm or whatever. If I connect my networks in this screen, when I share something on Instagram, it will then automatically also go to Twitter. It will automatically also go to Facebook. That'll save me some effort. It'll automatically go to Amoeba or Mixi. So if I do connect with these networks, that'll save me a little bit of effort so that I'm not posting and spending all my time going to all the networks. I post on Instagram, it automatically goes to the other networks. Not the best, though. Twitter, for example, used to be able to, when you shared something from Instagram over to Twitter, you would see the text and you would see a preview of the picture right in Twitter. Nowadays, you don't. You only see the link. So if I share from Instagram to Twitter, it's just going to show me a link back to Instagram. And I miss that. I miss being able to see my picture right on Twitter. but whatever reason happened, you know, Facebook owns Instagram, Facebook's arrival to, in, to Twitter, and therefore Twitter connectivity was minimized, so that's not so valuable. Um, I can share to Flickr. I personally like that. I like using Flickr also. It's another photo sharing site. It's been around longer than Instagram. It's not as famous as Instagram. It's lost a lot of Cache, I think. I don't think it's as popular. But I like Flickr because it's a great, it's, I think it's a better photo organization system. Um, I post something to Instagram, it automatically goes to Flickr where I can make folders to organize my photos, add hashtags and other things to further aid discoverability. And so Instagram is basically going to be a long string of photos going on and on and on. That photo that I posted two months ago, good luck finding it again if you're very active on Instagram. But if you also share to Flickr, Flickr has folders to organize your photos and the search feature is really nice. Yes, um, they are still charging for extra features. One of the features used to be more space, but now they give you for free one terabyte of space. Well, the problem would be people have I don't know if they've limited the folders, but I know that they give you one terabyte of space, so I sort of feel they've done away with the limitation of folders. I've had a paid account for a few years and I liked the features that it's had also like to avoid the advertisements and such. And then after they changed to like free terabyte, I don't know the big benefit anymore having the paid one, but I've got a credit card on it that I forget to cancel. So I'm still paying for it, but it's $20 a year, so not so bad, $29 a year. But uh, that's why you might want to connect any of these. Let me go back. Push notifications. When anyone interacts with you, you could get notifications. 
I believe by default it's going to show you from people I know. Um, this is like tailored posts on Twitter where if I'm famous and I've got 10,000 followers and people are liking my stuff and commenting on my stuff, I'm gonna I'm, my phone's going to be blowing up. I'm going to get so many notifications. Another like, another follow, ho-hum. I'm going to be getting so much activity. If I've got it from everyone, anyone on Instagram could like my comment and I'll get a notification pop-up. That may be good or bad. Again, if you are very famous, have a lot of followers, that could be too much activity that you're seeing. So if you set it to from people I follow, it'll be a little more limited to those that you're already connected with. But I'm going to recommend from everyone, especially as a beginner, I'm going to recommend show me who followed me. I don't know them. I might want to follow them back. Show me who commented. Show me all of that stuff that's happening. I want to be up to date about it. I want to know the new followers that I got. Tell me when my friend from Facebook joins Instagram so I can follow them and then we've got Instagram direct requests we'll see what that is a little later people can tag you in a photo if I take a group photo and one person uh, shared it they can then tag that I was in the photo and she was in the photo and he was in the photo just so that when someone else looks at that photo they will then be able to click on the other people in the photo. As, as businesses, it might not be so valuable. The one use case could be, what if I take a photo, I've got Victor's Bakery, what if I take a photo of everyone in my kitchen, in, um, in, the, in the restaurant, and then I tag them all. So the point of that is, some of my chefs in my kitchen might have, you know, 10 times more followers than me. And it's an ego thing to see, ah, I, got, I got featured on this photo, let me share it. So my photo could go to more people, build a bigger audience, and I could get, potentially in the end, more followers. So all of these... Although these are up to you to change, the defaults are fine, but if you don't want some of them, you can just change them. Go back. You can look at cellular data use yourself. If you're on a data plan that sucks up your, your bytes, you can change that. Save original photos. I would say I would keep that. Um, whatever photo you create, you also want to save it to your regular camera roll because that way you can then download it to your to your device, I mean to your computer or whatever. Uh, read the blog, privacy notice, etc. And then at the very bottom, clear search. So you can delete your search if you want to if you don't want to get suggestions anymore, or log out. The point of log out, as I've said, you can only manage one Instagram account at a time. I can create as many as I want, as long as I use different email addresses. But I can only use one account at a time on the official app. There might be other apps out there that let you manage multiple accounts. I know on, on my main phone, which is a Windows phone, there's an amazing app called Six Tag. It's it's the unofficial Instagram app, Six Tag. What's really cool about it is I can switch between accounts, no problem. But it's not for iPhone, it's not for Android, it's only for Windows at the moment. What we have to do here on iPhone and Android is, if I'm managing one business account, and now I need to manage another business account, I have to log out and log in to the other account. And then log out of that account when I, go when I want to go back to the first account. That's annoying and they'll probably fix it so that you can switch accounts eventually. So that was all the different screens of Instagram. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to use 
the central icon which is actually to share something to take a photo and such so it's uh, 11.45 we'll take a break until 11.55 when we come back we'll actually post some photos to Instagram which yes we can delete if we no longer want them up and such but let's take a break we'll be back in 10 minutes and then we'll share <laughs>